Hello, and welcome to Math Week 2, Part 2, uh, Rational and Irrational Numbers. So we have our same uh, cover sheet here. We are in the week of April 20th to 24th. We have an introduction, math notes to put in your notebook, study notes, step-by-step -step guides, course outline, where you have two assignments to complete an optional challenge problem, which I'd like to challenge you to do with your family. Okay, still have your uh, multiplication and division table, which will not help you in this lesson. Or I guess it will if you have a mind that can see those number patterns. All right, this brings us into our introduction. And um, I'm gonna do my best with how to write on this page because my stylist just doesn't let me write in small. So let's go ahead and get started. Here we are, rational and irrational numbers. Rational numbers can be written as a ratio of two integers. Ratio should give you a flashback to seventh grade math. Uh, so this is positive and negative whole numbers and zero. So is the square root of square root of four rational or irrational? Use a calculator if you need. Square root of four, it should be two or 2.0 and you would be correct. And since two can be written as two over one, it is rational. So that is our ratio, two to one. So now find the square root of eight. Are there digits to the right of the decimal? Okay, so let's take a look. All right, square root of eight, there it is. You see it? Yeah, there's tons of numbers to the right of the decimal. How many do they repeat? So on, on the calculator that was used for here, there were seven. There are more than that here, and none of them repeat. So therefore, it is not rational. So we call it irrational. Okay, so now indicate if the following are rational or irrational and why. All right, so... Um, these first ones here, so it says square root of nine equals three. So that is rational since it is a perfect square. The second one, square root of 0 0.64 is 0 0.8. And that is rational because it terminates. Terminates means it ends, right? Think terminator. Next one, square root of 20. You'll see right here that this is a kind of <laughs> a... It's about equal to, and that's because it never ends. So it's irrational since it neither terminates and it does not repeat. This next one, same thing, irrational, neither terminates or repeats. Okay, so now we get into, let me erase some of this. So now we're getting into um, where we need to solve it on our own. So square root of 10 is, 3.16, let's see how tiny I can write here, equals 3.16. Eh, that's all right. So 3.16, and that is irrational because it actually continues from there. So it's 3.16, and then the numbers continue. They do not repeat, and it does not end. So square root of 10 is irrational, irrational. That is not legible. Let's see here. Um, all right, so 10, I'm just gonna put, let's see if I can put a little I next to it. You know, I'm just going to cross it out. That means irrational. Okay, next one, square root of 100. It's a perfect square. That equals 10. So yes, it is rational. Okay, next one, square root of 0 0.81. That equals 0.9. 
and that's where it ends. We can write 0.9 sets 9 tenths. We can write it as a fraction, and it ends. So yes, that is rational. They're all going to blend together. Next one, square root of 8.1. This one equals 2.84, and it continues. It is irrational. I'm going to cross it out. Irrational because it does not terminate, and you cannot write it as a ratio. Next one, square root of 144. Perfect square. Square root of 144 is 12. So yes, it is rational. Next one, square root of 1.44. That equals, look at this, 1.2. So yes, that one is rational as well. And next one, square root of 14.4, it equals 3.79, whole bunch of numbers. It does not terminate, and you cannot write it, um, and it also does not repeat. So you, that one is not rational. That one is for 14.4, no. Next one, square root of 0 0.144, that equals point. 379, it still continues, it does not terminate, it does not repeat, is not rational. And the last one, 0 0.0144, so square root of that, it is 0 0.12. It ends, which means terminates. We can write it as a ratio, so yes, it is rational. All right, so for me, it's just easiest if I use a calculator and there's a couple things that I'm looking for is does it terminate? Does the number end? Does it repeat? Which we'll see that on our note page um, or does it just keep on going? Okay. Here are our notes. There we go. Okay, number 34, so uh, copy these down or you can just simply put it in your notebook, but keep them since these are a great resource for high school. Rational and irrational numbers, all right? Rational and irrational numbers. A rational number can be written as a ratio of two integers. So our example is two equals two over one. Uh, 0.3 or 3 tenths can be written as a fraction. Or we have a repeating decimal right here, which is zero or negative 0 0.16. Repeating is what that line above it, above it means. But we can write that as a fraction, which is negative 1 6. Okay, so note it says rational numbers written as a decimal either terminate or repeat. Terminate means end or the number repeats. Our examples are one third, same as 0 0.3 repeating, or two fifths can be written as a decimal, 0.4, it terminates. Okay, irrational numbers cannot be written as a ratio of two integers. Um, here's a special note, all square roots except perfect squares and cube roots except perfect cube roots are irrational, such as pi. Pi is 3.14, blah, 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 right? It just always continues. It's an irrational number. Here's some examples over here. Examples. So our number, square root of 12, is irrational. It's not a perfect square. Makes it easy to answer, correct? Uh, negative 0.25 repeating is rational. It's a repeating decimal. Negative square root of nine is rational, it's a perfect square. 72 fourths, rational because it is a ratio of two integers. Pi, irrational because it neither terminates nor repeats. Okay, so next we have our red resource folder. Oops. switch there we go red resource folder this is a curriculum guide and this is part of the number system 
Okay, so rational, irrational numbers. I'll read um, through it quickly. A rational number can be written as a fraction with integer, which is positive and negative whole numbers, and zero. Uh, numerator and denominator, except not zero as a denominator. Remember that is undefined. Uh, all decimals are rational if they terminate, means end or repeat. Three is rational because three equals three over one. Negative two tenths is rational because negative 0.2 or negative two tenths can be written as a ratio. Uh, 0 0.75, which is 75 one hundredths, is rational. Uh, 0 0.3 is rational because it repeats, and so to put that as a fraction, it would be one third. And here, an irrational number cannot be written as a fraction. Here's a couple examples here. So square root of 2 and square root of 5, if you look at those, the decimal just continues on. It does not repeat, and it does not end. So a special note, all square roots are irrational except perfect squares. Perfect squares are perfect, so they end. Pi is irrational because pi equals 3.1415926 and continued on, never terminates, never repeats. So to locate an irrational number on a number line, round the number to the nearest hundredths place, and then you're going to estimate its location. So it's shown right here and here. That brings us to the homework. Okay, so what we are going to be doing is we are going to indicate if it is rational or irrational, and then we have to write an explanation why. Okay, so here's our note. A number is rational if it can be written as a ratio or a fraction of two integers. Okay, so here's our two examples. And we have one through four on this page here. Uh, one through fee, three, already done for you. So if we look at number one, square root of 64, it's rational because it's a perfect square. Square root of 64 equals eight. Right here, what we learned in the notes is that any square root that is not a perfect square is irrational. So this is irrational. It neither terminates or repeats. Number three, 0 0.43 or 43 hundredths is how we would read that. It is rational. We can write that as 43 over 100 and it terminates. Okay, so it doesn't go beyond 0 0.43. And number four, 0 0.16, and that is repeating. It can also be written as 1 sixth. It is rational because it is a repeating decimal. Repeating. Can you read that? Decimal. Okay, so let's give a go at the rest of the problems. Where are you? There we go. Okay, and I went ahead and I copied this part up here again so we can see uh, why it would be rational. Okay, so number five, square root of two. Now, two is not a perfect square, so it is going to not be rational. So we're going to say irrational. And the reason why is it does not, does not terminate or repeat. And I think we could also say irrational because it's not a perfect square. Okay. Number six. Number six, ah, square root of 100, it's a perfect square. Yes, so that equals 10. One, six equals 10. So it is rational 
because it is a perfect square. Number seven, number seven, 3.14, this is pi. We already know that pi is irrational. But irrational because it does not, uh, all right, that's a semicolon. Oh, that's like a scribble, sorry, sad. So it is irrational because it does not terminate or repeat. Okay. Number eight, negative three and eight ninths. So, the way that we could simplify this, let's make that into an improper fraction. So we would go uh, 9 times negative 3 is, or just 9 times 3 is 27 plus 8 gives us 35 ninths. So it is rational. And if we were to simplify that, that would equal 3.88. And that is rational because it terminates. Mm. Terminates. Okay. And actually, wait, 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 wait. I made a mistake there. Does not terminate. I'll look at my cheat sheet. This ends up being actually 3.88 repeated. So rational, we can make it as a ratio, and it is a repeating decimal. Repeats. Sorry about that. So yes, this one is rational, but the reason is because the decimal repeats. Hey, square root of five. It is irrational because it's not a perfect square. I'm just gonna say not perfect square. Perfect square. Okay. Next one, this is the opposite. So negative square root of 81 equals negative nine. It is rational because it is a perfect square. Rational, perfect square. Uh-oh, there. Oof, sorry. Right, number 11. So this number here is 625 thousands. It and can be written as a fraction and it ends. So this would be rational. Because it terminates. Okay. And our last one. Number 12. So this is not a perfect square. Square root of 2.5, which means it is irrational. Not a perfect square. All right? It's hip to be square. Okay? So that's it for this one. A lot of writing, not much work. Let's go on to the next assignment. Okay. There we are.
Okay, so this assignment is asking which one is greater. It says, which, is, which number is greater? Explain your answer. And what I found is these the explanations for one and two just seemed a lot cleaner, I guess, than the answers that came up for the rest, but it's just how it goes, right? Okay, so right here it says for number one, which is greater, square root of five or two and three fourths? So the square root of five is close to the square root of four, which equals two. So uh, two and three fourths is greater than, and that should be the square root of five. Okay, number two, which is greater, square root of 10 or negative four. So square root of 10 is close to square root of nine, which equals three. And of course it's greater than any negative number, which we have this negative four. So square root of 10 is greater than negative four. Okay, so pretty easy explanations. Let's look to see what we have for our others. Here we go. Okay, so here we have uh, number three. Oh, there. Number three. There. Okay, so four in one fifth or the square root of 23. So when I first looked at this, I said, well, square root of 23 is close to square root of five, or I'm sorry, square root of 25, which is five five. So that is going to be bigger than four and one fifth. I wanted to double check on my calculator. Four and one fifth ends up being um, equals 4.2 and square root of 23 is 4.79. So yes, square root of 23 is bigger. Okay. This next one, number four, yeah. Number four, um, negative square root of two or negative two. Well, they're both going to end up being negative numbers. Square root of two is going to be smaller than two. They're both negative. So obviously negative two is going to be bigger. Okay, oh, but then it's not down here. Let's see here. Hmm. Well, this right here, that's wrong because obviously, so if I were to work those out, this ends up being negative 1.41 and negative 2. So, of course, negative 2 is bigger. Answer key's wrong on that one. Okay, number five. Square root of 20 or 10. Well, square root of 20, that is right in between um, uh, 16 and 25, which would be four and five. So either way, it's going to be less than 10. So that lets me know that 10 is the bigger number. Okay, I'm not even going to work that out on the calculator. Okay, number six. Uh, negative square root of 15 or negative 3.5. Well, negative or negative square root of 15 is close to the negative square root of 16, which is four. So that ended up being a negative four. So I used my calculator. That turned out to be negative. 3.87, and that is bigger than negative. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, we're talking negative numbers. So when, what we would need to think about is which one's farther from zero on a number line. And so negative 3.87 is farther from zero, which means negative 3.5 is going to be the larger number and checking the answer key there it is all right see i made a mistake i talked myself out of it found the right one 
erase. Okay, so that brings us, that was six, so now we are on number seven. So here we have two thirds or square root of 16 over square root of 81. I know that those are both perfect squares. So square root of 16 is four. Square root of 81 is nine. Well, which one of these is bigger or greater? Uh, this one here equals 0 0.44. Two thirds equals 0 0.66, which is bigger than 0.64. So two thirds is bigger. Here's our answer down there in the answer key. Number eight, square root of 133 or 10 and 3 fourths. So square root of 133 is 11.53. 10 and 3 fourths can also be written as 10 and uh, 75. So that's 3 quarters. Okay. Obviously, 11.53 is greater. So that's going to be square root of 133 is greater. Working our way, number nine. Square root of 50 or 7.8. So square root of 50, that is close to square root of 49, which would be seven. If I were to work those out, of course, that gives me uh, square root of 50 is 7.07. .07. And we have 7.8, and 7.8 is the greater number. There it is right there. All right, last problem. Okay, perfect square. I love it when that happens. Square root of 36 is 6, so that gives us negative 6 or negative Five. Remember, we're trying to see which one is greater. The greater one with negative numbers is going to be closer to zero on the number line. So that means that negative five is going to be your bigger number. And in, ca in case that's confusing, let me just, so this is my number line. So here's negative six, here's negative five, negative four, negative three, negative two, negative one, zero. That's a zero. So in looking at that, negative five is closer to zero. So for negative numbers, that's going to be greater. Okay. So I hope this helped you out with your math for week two, part two, to go through your day. Remember who you are. Remember what you stand for. Lead by example. See you next week.